So looking at nonlinear sequences, I think the first thing we do is we look at what different types there are. So start off with the difference maybe between linear and nonlinear. So for a linear sequence, it might be something like 2m plus 5, or minus 3m plus 2, or n. Okay, so these are all linear sequences, they just involve a single power of n. A sequence like this might look like 2, 5, 8, 11, etc., where the constant difference is 3. In terms of nonlinear sequences, then, probably the most recognized one that you'll, you'll have seen, I suppose, uh, would be a quadratic one. So that would be something that looks like n squared plus 3n minus 2, or 2n squared plus 5n minus 4. And we'll have a look at some examples of these ones in a moment. Um, other types of sequence are geometric. So geometric is another one, and we have an example of that one towards the end. And in terms of geometric, that's where the terms multiply each time. And in terms of what the sequence itself might look like, it could be something like 2 times 3 to the power of n minus 1, for example. Um, just to show you a quick example of what one of these looks like, it could be, so for this um, sequence here, so it could be 2 and then 6 and then 18 and then 54, etc. So each time we're multiplying by 3. So instead of adding by the same amount each time now, we're multiplying by the same amount. So that's a geometric sequence. And then the other one that you should be familiar with is Fibonacci. So with the Fibonacci sequence, each term is the summation of the two previous terms. So if we started off with 1 and 1, then the next term would be 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2. The next term would be 3, because 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 5, and then 8, and then 13, etc. So each term is the summation of the two before. So 5 plus 8 is 13, for example. I'm going to focus mainly on a quadratics and then a geometric at the end. So if we start off with this quadratic sequence here, I'm going to find the nth term of this one. So the first five terms are 3, 9, 17, 27, and then 39. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the difference between them. So between the first one is 6, and then 8, and then 10, and then 12. Now, if these were all the same, then it would be a linear sequence. They're not the same, so I'm going to look at the second difference, which is 2, 2, and 2. So the second difference here is all the same. Therefore, this means it's a quadratic. Now, the power of n squared we find by halving this value here. So in terms of the quadratic, we're looking for something that's like this, so a n squared plus b n plus c. So this value of a is found by dividing this number by 2. So in this case, it's 1. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the residual method for this. So I'm going to write down the sequence for n squared and then look at what we're left with. So in terms of n squared, um, what I'm going to do is square each number in terms. So if you do 1 squared, you get 1. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, then 16, and then 25. And we're going to see how these relate to their um, similar terms in this sequence above. So in terms of the residual then, what I'm going to be doing is saying, I know that n squared is part of the sequence, so I'm going to take the n squared component out of the sequence that we've got above, and then deal with what's left. So if I do 3 minus 1, that gives me 2. 9 minus 4 gives me 5, 17 minus 9 is 8, 27 minus 16 is 11, and then 39 minus 25 is 14. So I've just taken away the n squared from the sequence above. What this has left me then with is a new sequence, which I'm now going to find the nth term of. So I know that my solution is going to be n squared something. So in this case, this is going up by 3, 3, 3, and 3. So first difference, all the same, therefore it's a linear sequence. And now because it's going up in threes, that means that b is equal to 3. So I know it's going to be plus 
3n, and I'm going to apply the same idea as the n squared. So if I write down the sequence for 3n, when n is 1, it would be 3, when n is 2, 6, then 9, 12, 15. So I'm just substituting in the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, I'm going to be taking away this from the sequence here. So 2 minus 3 is minus 1, 5 minus 6 is minus 1, 8 minus 9 is minus 1, and the remaining ones are minus 1 as well. Now these are all the same, they're all minus 1, therefore c is minus 1. So our quadratic sequence then is n squared plus 3n minus 1. If we have a look at an example now where there is um, a greater value for n squared, so rather than just being 1, and we'll see it's very much the same idea. So between 3 and 13 is 10, then 14, then 18, then 22. And then our second difference is 4, 4, and 4. So this tells me that I've got 2n squared. So I know that 2n squared is going to be part of my solution. So in terms of working out what 2n squared is, if I put in 1, I get 1 squared is 1 times 2 would be 2. For 2, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. And then 5 squared is 25 times 2 is 50. And again, I'm going to take away these values from the sequence above. So 3 take away 2 is 1. 13 take away 8 is 5. And then we've got 9, 13, 17. And again, I'm going to find the difference. So 4, 4, 4, and then 4. So this means I've got 4n. So I'm going to put that there, plus 4n. And then 4n, so that's 1 times 4, so 4, and then 8, 12, 16 and then 20 then 1 minus 4 is minus 3 5 minus 8 is minus 3 9 minus 12 is minus 3 and then the remaining are minus 3 as well which means the nth term of my sequence is 2n squared plus 4n minus 3 now having a look at an exam question so this was from one of the specimen papers. So it says, um, here is the first four terms of the sequence, 3, 8, 15, 24. Find an expression in terms of n for the nth term of this sequence. So I'm just going to rewrite the sequence here. So 3, 8, 15, 24. So it goes up by 5, and then 7, and then 9. And then second difference is 2, which makes it n squared. So I know n squared is going to be part of my solution. And n squared is 1, 4, 9, 16. Now when I find the difference, I get 2, 4, 6, and 8. Now these are going up in 2s, which makes it 2n. So I've got n squared plus 2n. Now 2n, so 2 times 1 is 2, and then 4, and then 6, and then 8. And now when we do the residual, 2 take away 2 is 0. 4 take away 4 is 0, and the rest is 0, so there's nothing on the end. So this sequence is just n squared plus 2n. Now for part b, it says the nth term of a different sequence is 2 to the power of n plus 5. So show that 36 is not a term of this sequence. Now, if we have 2 to the n plus 5, now if 36 was in the sequence, then this would equal 36. Now, 2 to the power of n would then equal 31. However, there is no power of 2 that's equal to 31. All powers of 2 are even. The closest would be 32. So in this case here, we can say um, 36 is not in the sequence as 31 is not a power of 2. Now onto the final question, so this one's a geometric sequence. So it says, S is a geometric sequence, and it says, given that root x minus 1, 1, and root x plus 1 are the first three terms of S, 
find the value of x. It says you must show all your working. Now, for this question here, we need to look at some, maybe a little bit of additional information to help explain it. Now, I'm going to use an example above to show you um, the key features of a geometric sequence and how it applies to this question. Now, a geometric sequence we know is where you multiply each term it will by a, the same number, so it's multiplying each time to get bigger. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18. Of course, if this was a fraction, then this sequence would become smaller. Um, just depends on the sequence that you have. Now, what we can see here is that if we're multiplying by the same thing each time, another way we could look at it is if we had 6 divided by 2, that would give us 3. If we had 18 divided by 6, that would give us 3. So dividing the terms gives us what this multiplier is. And that's the idea that we need to apply to this sequence here. Now, generally with a geometric sequence, the term we use for this here is R. So that's the, the letter we use to denote it. So if we had three terms in our sequence, if we call them U1, U2, and U3, what we say is each time is U multiplied by R. And that's the common ratio. And so in this term, uh, in this sequence here, R then would be equal to 1 divided by root x minus 1. So this term divided by this. So using the idea of the numerical example above. So 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. So 1 divided by root x minus 1 gives us R. Similarly, R is also root x plus 1 divided by 1. So if we use the same idea here, so 6 divided by 2 was 3, 18 divided by 6 was also 3. So here we have root x plus 1 divided by 1 would also be r. Now, the idea we're going to use here, so looking at this one above, so I'm saying 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 18 divided by 6 is 3. Now looking at this, that means that 6 divided by 2 is the same as 18 divided by 6, which we know, so 3 is 3. So looking at this one here, we can say that root x plus 1, so divided by 1 is still just root x plus 1, will be equal to 1 divided by root x minus 1. So if these are both r, then this and this are equal. Now we can solve this for x. So if I multiply by root x minus 1, we get root x plus 1 times root x minus 1 is equal to 1. Now what we have here is the difference of two squares. Now I'm going to multiply it out just to show you, but you don't necessarily need to do so because it should just be this squared take away this squared, but root x times root x is x, root x times minus 1 is minus root x, 1 times root x is positive root x, and 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. And then all of this is still equal to 1. Now the minus root x and the plus root x will cancel, which leaves us with x minus 1 equals 1. Therefore, x is equal to 2. Now the question stated, find the value of x, which we have found to be 2. Now for part b, it says, show that the fifth term of s is 7 plus 5 root 2. Now for a geometric sequence, the nth term is found by doing un equals a r to the n minus 1, where a, sometimes you'll see it written as u1, because that's the first term in the sequence, um, yeah, denotes the first term in the sequence, so it's the same thing. r here, then, is the common ratio, basically the thing you're multiplying by each time. Now, we can find the fifth term of the sequence by replacing n with 5 and all of the other bits in, as we know. So if we do u5 is equal to a, so the first term. Now the first term of this sequence is up here. And it's root x minus 1. Now we know x is 2, so it's root 2 minus 1. The ratio, so I'm going to use this one because it's the simplest, is root 2 plus 1. And then the power would be 5 minus 1, or in other words, 4. If you type this into your calculator, as it is a calculator question, you'll be left with 7 plus 5 root 2.